Woo! Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to make the spice rack by Oakley Roots. This is the one we make today. We're going to add on a handle so we can do an optional crossbody strap and have a little grab handle. We're going to do a fun sticker embroidery patch window to display all of our fun bookish things. We install a metal bag tag, and for added flair, we also make some glitter shaker panels. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button, and let's get going making this spice rack. So the items we're going to need cut out our pieces are going to be one exterior. I'm using Butter Vinyl from Weft and Warp in black. I do have the curved markings marked, but I'm not going to cut it until the end. It's kind of a guide to where I'm going to put my interiors. So that's my exterior. Here is my interior. This is water resistant canvas from Mormino. Then we're going to need our middle slip pocket piece. This will be folded in the middle here. We're going to need our slip pocket front. And I am going to put clear on top of mine for a fun added effect. This vinyl is going to be available for pre-order with Backstitch the 25th of September. It's glittery. So this will be my front of the zipper pocket. Here is the back of the zipper pocket. Then we're going to have the clear pocket which ends up going on this side. On top of the slip pocket in the middle, we have our ID window with its lining. It's clear. I'm going to use a, a fun tag from Sewing Blurbs to put under that. Also, a nice feature we're going to do is a shaker window for our slip pocket. So I have some clay polymer sprinkles from Happy Kawaii Supply. And to accomplish that, we're also going to need another of these clear pockets, just a clear vinyl. And this will go behind just to hold the glitter in place. You're going to need your interfacing. I'm using fusible fleece like the pattern calls for. You also need your zipper and a pole. I'm going to be adding a handle to mine. This is six and a half by one. For that handle, you're going to need two half inch D rings. You also will need some rivets. I'm also going to add this fun um, magically made tag. And so I've cut a border to go behind it to put on the front. You can just add a quarter inch around to any front tag you want to add a backing to. You're also going to need two sets of snaps and a couple yards of binding. This binding I made myself, it is one and a half inches wide. 
The last thing we're gonna add is a clear window pocket on the back exterior to put our various stickers and patches just for some fun added swag. To accomplish this, we're gonna need a piece of clear that is six and a half by eight and a half, and another piece of clear that is one by eight and a half. These will overlap each other so that you can just slip in like that. All right, let's get started sewing. So the first thing we're gonna do with a full bobbin is we're gonna top stitch our handle, mark a line at a half inch down the middle of your handle piece. Go ahead and get some double stick tape. I'm using an eighth of an inch and run a piece along each long edge. Then you're gonna remove the backing and fold your long edge to that middle line you just drew. There does not need to be a space in between both long edges once they're folded together since it is a handle. Now we're gonna top stitch at an eighth inch seam allowance at a five stitch length all the way down, making sure to either pull your thread tails to the back and tie off or back stitch. I'm going to use the tie off method. set that aside and we are going to work on our zipper pocket. Make sure the edges of your zipper tape are singed to prevent fraying. You can also iron your zipper tape before you install it to help. Take the zipper pocket front and lining. Along this long edge of the exterior, place a line of double stick tape. Remove the backing and place your zipper tape right side together. So right side down, wrong side up along this edge. You can baste at this point if you want to, but I find I get a better result if I just place another layer of double stick tape along that same edge. And then place your lining. If you're doing clear, you're, wanna, you're going to want to place your lining wrong side down so that when it is flipped over, the right side will be facing the interior of the clear. So, wrong side down. Base this together. I'm gonna use a four and a half stitch length with a three eighths inch seam allowance. away from the zipper teeth and you can use some clips to help you hold it. We're going to top stitch this with an eighth inch seam allowance. So because we put the lining on wrong side down, I mean that will be the inside of the pocket, but this way the sprinkles can be on the slipperier side to move around and shake a little better. 
go ahead and top stitch this with a five stitch length an eighth of an inch away from the seam. Now take your zip slip pocket backing and place it right side up on your table. Add a line of double stick tape down this long straight edge. And place your panel right side down on top of it. You're going to sew this on with an eighth inch seam allowance. Okay, so we're going to sew this on with a three eighth inch seam allowance. Go ahead and pull this away from the zipper. And then we are going to top stitch with an eighth inch seam allowance along the zipper. So our zipper pocket will look like this, but we need to install our zipper pull first. And we want the zipper to close going up towards the top. So you're gonna have to start at the bottom. Pull your teeth apart slightly. Install a little of the zipper teeth. Put the other side in there. I like to line it up on a table so it looks kind of even and then you can just pull it down. If it's not even, just keep rearranging till the teeth match. Pull that about the middle. Now we're gonna fold this pocket towards the back and line up all of these curves and clip. So you will have a little bit of an edge here and that's what you want. You can also iron at this point if you wanna make that crisp. I'm not going to just going to finger press it. And don't worry if your edges are a little uneven because we will trim up before we attach our binding and all the edges are covered with binding anyways. Taking your lining right side up, Align your zipper slip pocket on the right side of the lining. We're going to stitch this down and baste it into place. It's okay if it doesn't line up perfectly around the edges. We will be trimming and we will be attaching binding. Now we're going to turn this into a glitter. Um, like an applique shaker panel almost using some clay polymer sprinkles. I will add them in right before I finish basting around this bottom edge. So we're going to just sew around these three edges with a basting stitch an eighth of an inch. And before we get to the end here, we'll shove some sprinkles in there. up on the edge go ahead and grab your clay polymer sprinkles lift up an edge and just dump some under there you want to keep it away from the seam allowance that we're about to close up and you don't want to put too many sprinkles use the Goldilocks roll here and then finish basting down the way So because we use the clay polymer and we have the water resistant canvas, it slides around really nice in there. Adds a fun little element to your zipper slip pocket. Perfect. Let's go ahead and work on our middle slip pocket and ID window. 
for this middle part we're going to need our slip pocket our clear vinyl for the id window and the actual id window exterior i'm going to add a fun woven label as well and i do have a piece of fusible fleece. I am not going to be fusing this fleece, but I am going to sew it into the middle. So go ahead and fold your slip pocket in half. And you can see this interfacing. We'll just line right here in the middle once we put everything together. But for now, we don't need it. You may also fuse that if you wish. Okay, fold your pocket wrong sides together, lining up the edges. You can iron, or I'm just going to be pressing. Finger pressing. And I'm just going to add two clips. We're going to top stitch down the edge here. Add an eighth of an inch seam allowance. take the fusible fleece. I'm just going to add some double stick tape down two of the edges to hold it in place. centering it. This just adds a little protection for our Kindle. Now we're going to assemble the ID window. Turn your ID window main piece wrong side up and attach double stick tape i'm using eight inch all around the interior square if your machine does not like double stick tape when it's sewing you should cut the window larger so that you can put the tape outside of the seam allowance Lay your ID window right side down if you have a print like I do. So this is going to be the top, the longer, larger edge. And I'm going to want my print to go like this because I want that little ice cream. So we're going to flip that down and center it on our tape. Okay, now we're going to flip it back over and we are going to top stitch around this inner window. I'm going to use a 4.5 stitch length. I find that with my machine that that works better for me. thread tails to the back and tie them off and singe the end ends if you're um, not using cotton webbing. I mean, pull your thread tails to the back and tie them off. If you're not using cotton thread, go ahead and singe them as well. There we 
go. Now we are going to place a line of double stick tape on this top short edge that's of the thicker amount. This is going to be the actual top. Remove that tape and fold down this edge about a quarter of an inch. You kind of want it to match these sides here. Now go ahead and top stitch just down here. I'm going to pull my threads to the back so that then when I'm stitching this down, I can just start where these end. Taking your slip pocket, you're going to measure two and a quarter inches down from the top with the top stitched edge being on your right and one inch from that top stitched edge and a line your IT window there go ahead and move your back of your slip pocket and the interfacing out of the way and we are going to top stitch down these edges here I'm going to put my needle in the beginning hole and not back stitch I'll pull my threads to the back go around our last stitch will be into this hole here now we're going to create the clear slip pocket slash shaker panel. So you need two pieces of clear vinyl. I'm using this Backstitch Snacks glitter vinyl and just a piece of regular clear TPU. We are going to line up all the edges and baste these together. Before we finish basting and closing up, we'll throw some sprinkles in there. These should fit together relatively well and stick. So use a basting stitch and go ahead and sew. We'll stop about here, throw some sprinkles and finish sewing. <music> shaker panel with our sprinkles. We're going to add a binding to the top. Um, it'll be a trim for our pocket just like this. And I just folded the long edges in. So go ahead and add some double stick tape to this edge here. And you can apply it on both sides or just one, whatever works for you. Okay, we're gonna top stitch along this edge here. Um, make sure your fabrics line up evenly so that the top stitch catches both the front and the back. You can use about an eighth of an inch, probably just a little bit more to hold that in place. <laughs> Take your lining and we're going to attach everything, the rest of it. Line up your shaker slip pocket to the left edges and clip. And then take your slip pocket and line it up right next to that. We are
we're going to baste these in place along these edges here and then we'll come back and apply our binding on top. I'm gonna also baste down both of these edges before I put my binding on top just to keep it nice and secure. Take your binding. I just didn't double fold it. I just folded in the long edges. Take a piece. I'm going to use quarter inch double stick tape and run it down this whole seam. If you want to add a pen loop, now is the time to do that. You're going to add it right here. Okay, I have my pen loop here. It's a two inch by... looks like 5 8 inch piece of holdover elastic. Okay, peeling off our double stick tape, go ahead and get your pen loop folded in half. And I'm going to put it here and just kind of see if that will be enough. Now we're going to top stitch down each long edge. Okay, we are going to attach our fun plate. So essentially it will close like this. So this side would be my edge that that should have any kind of fun plate. So I'm gonna apply some double stick tape to the back of my backing. And I am going to measure two inches up from the edge of the flap. Remove the backing and center it here. I'm going to top stitch around here and then we will install the plate. to see which holes it goes through the washer. So it looks like it's going to be the outermost holes. So center your washer. And mark the lines. where you need to cut the slits for the prongs to fit through. I'm going to go ahead and adhere some Theratex to the back of this badge backing just for security. The 
stuff is peel and stick and it's really amazing. Now go ahead and use um, your, some kind of razor blade or cutting tool and cut your slits for your plate. Go ahead and push the plate through, make sure it's installed the right way. And line it up on the badge backing as best as you can. You might need to cut your slits a little to be able to move it. It looks good there. I'm gonna keep the protective stuff on until I take pictures. Flipping it back over, slide the washer on until it snugly fits down. And you can either fold your prongs in or out. Since I have enough space in between them, I'm going to fold them in so they don't come out here and poke a hole potentially. So go ahead and press those down. You can hammer a little bit. Okay. Now take a little bit of tape and cover those prongs to protect your lining. You can use duct tape. I'm using 3M 3903 tape. Using your pattern piece, go ahead and mark the location of your snaps. We're going to have to punch a hole for these. Um, after we baste the front, the exterior and interior. So you can just mark the spot now. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and install our strap. Okay, measuring one and a quarter inch in. You're going to go ahead and draw your hole punch marks. So it's five inches up from the flap and the edge of the handle will come in at one and a quarter inches. Repeat for the other side. Go ahead and punch these four holes as well. Okay, first we're going to install the rivets um, on the inner holes and press them. Then we'll go ahead and attach our D-rings. After you set those rivets, go ahead and slide your D-rings on and put your other rivets through the last holes on the handle. We're gonna go ahead and go and set these rivets. Now we have our handle and our plate attached. I'm going to go ahead and baste the fleece onto the exterior panel right now and then I will attach my sticker window. We will end up trimming down the rounded corners for this piece but we're going to go ahead and baste this on now. You can fuse it if you'd like um, but it's not really necessary in my opinion and it kind of helps with wrinkling not to. So go ahead and baste this on.
Six and a half inches from the flap edge, you're going to go ahead and line up your larger piece of clear vinyl. And go ahead and just clip this down. We're going to need to put the top of the flap, the smaller of the two, down and then we will baste it in place. All right, now get your smaller piece and six inches from the flap edge is where the edge of this is going to go. So they will overlap by a half of an inch. I got this idea from a fellow tester and friend, a so bestie, Car Carolina Little Stitches, Kayla. Okay, so just kind of line that up. Make sure they're both six inches from the edge. This one's a little high. There we go. Perfect. So we are going to base around all four edges and this will end up creating a little flap that you can slide your goodies into. I like to collect stickers and patches. So because we have this interfacing down now it'll act as a good um, backing for this. So go ahead and stitch around all four edges. These two edges will be noticeable. So do your best. <laughs> displaying goodies like patches or stickers will be on the back of our spice rack. Last thing we need to do is install our mail snaps. So on the edge opposite of the handle in the nameplate is where we're going to attach our mail snaps using the pattern piece. So go ahead and line up the pattern piece. And if you pick the hole closest to this edge, you can fit more in it. If you pick this hole, it'll be a smaller close. So just keep that in mind. Go ahead and punch these holes. Okay, due to the fact that my child has misplaced my things, because he borrows them and plays with them, we are going to be changing up to plastic snaps. While I do prefer metal ones, I have to order another set to get the tools. So we'll need four backs, that one's missing. two males and two female pieces. So we are going to attach the male end over here. So just go ahead and put your snap backing back here and the male part here. And then I'm going to use the clamp and clamp this down. I like to rotate it around a little bit. 
make sure that plastic gets smushed. There's one installed. These are quite easier to use, honestly. Repeat for the other side. There, our mail snaps are in. We are now done with the exterior. Go ahead and grab the interior and the way we're going to line this up is going to be the top of the flap on the left. The mail snaps here because it'll end up going like this when it's done. Meaning that So line up your edges and clip in place. We're going to baste and then all we have to do is top stitch our binding on. Easier said than done, but that's all that's left. Now we're going to go ahead and punch our holes here. Make sure your glitter's out of the way. And these will be going through the liner and the exterior. we are going to attach our binding so putting our exterior up open your binding and cut off this little bit go ahead and start it not on a bulky area I'm gonna put it about right here and you're gonna fold up this edge to make a triangle okay and go ahead and clip right sides together. We are going to sew this on with a quarter inch seam allowance. When you get to a curve, Clip right before the curve starts and then take your scissors and make little tiny cuts and then wrap it around that corner like so and clip.
Now you can baste this first. I'm just trimming down this clear right here. You can baste this first at an eighth inch seam allowance and then go back and do your um, quarter inch or you can just go for a quarter inch. Just know that the quarter inch seam allowance is the one that will count for the shape of the binding. So if you're a more experienced bag binder, I would probably skip the basting. If you're newer, go ahead and do the basting and then do your quarter inch. Um, one of your best tools for binding is going to be a pair of hemostats. You need these really cool rainbow ones and have them engraved from Leslie over at Jolie Lee Creations. It's an option. Or even just the little cheap nickel ones from Amazon work great. We are going to clip this binding. We don't want to cut it until the edge of this triangle here, past that. Do not secure your binding over this fold yet. We kind of want to leave this one loose in case we need a little extra as we go around. Okay, now we're going to stitch with a 4.5 stitch length and I'm going to do a quarter inch seam allowance. You can also stitch in this ditch right here that you see from the folding. Either one works, let's go.
now's the time to inspect and make sure all of your seams look good. You have no wrinkles, um, that they're straight. I have a little bit of a wobble here, so I'm going to just go down and make this line straight. Um, and now you can trim down any, make sure it's like really straight. You don't have any excess hanging around. see there this will be inside the seam allowance anyway so um, I think that's it the rest looks pretty good I'm gonna fix one more wobble right here Okay, now we are going to fold our binding over the edge and then top stitch it and we're done. So we will start here. And I'm going to be top stitching from the outside. So I'm just ensuring that this is pulled over my stitch line. So I'll fold it and then fold over. And just make sure that edge stays tucked in. Take your time with this step because it does affect how nice it looks in the end. I'm trying to make sure there's no wrinkles. And right here where they overlap. sure this edge wraps around the other one. stitch between I like to put mine between the edge and my stitch line over here 
So we're going to do it right down the middle and I'm going to do it with a five top stitch length. And as I go, I'm going to be clamping and ensuring that my backing has, the back of the binding is staying in place. As heck spice rack. I'm gonna go ahead and burn my threads. Where did I start to stop? Huh? Oh, right here. Okay, so we have our cute little ID window here. I'm gonna go ahead and put my wood logo there. Here's a Kindle. This is a 10th generation paper white. Slides perfectly right there. Your phone can fit in here. Your phone can fit in here. Um, you have a zipper pocket, a pen boot. So, you can go ahead and I'm gonna get my sprinkles out of my fold here. Snap face. And there you have it. Let's go ahead and take off our little, this is the best part, isn't it? I love taking these off. Oh, yes. Look at that. Here's our sticker window. Let's go ahead and add some of our favorite stickers. Kiki definitely approves. So, just kind of put these where we want them. Seal that back up since it's TPU, it sticks to each other. 
Look how fun that is. You can even put patches in there. You can slide that down there. There you go. One uber cute spice rack. And for added fun, since we added the handle, I'm going to go ahead and snap on this fun colored chain. This chain's nice too because you can adjust the length. And then, boom! Now you have a crossbody to take with you wherever you want. Paging all book besties who also sew. We got a banger! Shake your groove thing, shake your groove thing, yeah, yeah. Look at that. Oh. Boom, boom, accouchement. Look at this. We're going to basketball practice. Let's go. We're going to daycare. We're going to school. Let's go for coffee. How about some lunch? Yeah, this is just my Kindle holder. She's spicy. She's dicey. She's a spice rack. Meow. P.S. In case you're wondering, Kiki.